All right, video number four. Um, so uh, this is very important. So I've got to, I got to cover this comment here. Thank you for addressing my comment. My main thing was to say present and future sin is not acceptable to God. If you are going to continue to rebel, sin is of the devil. No, I'm saying after you have been saved, you must live righteously. You shouldn't be sinning. If you are still sinning, you better check your salvation because you can afford it. I'm sorry, you can forfeit it. I'm not once saved, always saved, or lordship salvation. I just believe the words of the Bible. I never said we would never sin, but if we can live a sinless life, if we can do all things through Christ, but if we do and we have the opportunity to repeat, we can be forgiven, but we should be living a completely different life if we are, are claiming to be saved by Christ's death on the cross. Faith without works is dead. There should be evidence of your faith, but by no means does your work save you from your sin. That's other religions that reject Christ. Hope that clears things up more. By the way, I still sin, but I'm humble enough to know I shouldn't be. And if I don't stop, I will forfeit my salvation. Uh, oh, that's terrible. Uh, he says... Remain in me and I'll remain in you. How can Christ remain in me if I'm going to habitually sin? If I go out and get drunk, crash my car and die, I don't believe I will go to heaven because drunkards don't enter the kingdom. God bless. Okay, so uh, by your own definition, you're not going to heaven. You're not going to be saved. Because you're in this flesh, you are... Uh, you are in sin. All right, so let me help. For one thing, uh, you say uh, you're not lordship salvation. Well, apparently you don't know what lordship salvation is. Lordship, lordship salvation very simply means you have to live for Christ to be saved. Once saved, always saved is believing in the Lord Jesus, that he's done the work for us, that we might be saved. All right. Um, so to put it real simple, uh, once saved, always saved is believing what Jesus did will save us. Lordship salvation is believing what we do, we can save ourselves, essentially making Christ of none effect. Okay, so here, in, like in Genesis eight, um, it says, "And the Lord smelled a sweet savior, a savor." And the Lord said, "In his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living, everything living, as I have done." This is a, after the flood. So, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Okay, so in this flesh, uh, you're you're gonna sin. Okay, the imagination of the heart is evil from your youth, and that's evidence that we need a savior, because we are not perfect. We're nowhere near perfect. And when you are born of the Spirit of God, you have the perfect spirit in you, but you're still in this flesh, and uh, let's see, like Paul writes, let's see, what's he say? Uh, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? So he's even admitting here in Romans 7 that he's a sinner. He's not perfect. He needs a Savior. We all need a Savior because we're in this body of death. And so, what you know? What are you gonna do? You think that the law saves you? I mean, that's essentially what you're saving, saying is that the law saves you. The law doesn't save you. The law curses you. All right. So if you're living by the law, then you're cursed. All right. Let's see. If there's any Christ has 
redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. These are examples that we need a Savior. <clears throat> right? Uh, so the law is there to bring us to Christ. All right? The law is not there to show us how to be saved. The law, the, I mean, it is in a sense that the law is there to show us that we aren't perfect. All right, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after the, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. All right, so um, if you are thinking the law is going to save you, you're essentially condemning yourself because. You're not keeping the law, even after you're saved. I mean, this, this, the idea is, okay, so if you continue to sin, you're going to lose your salvation. Well, that sort of philosophy is suggests that you should wait until you're on your deathbed to be saved. Because, uh, you know... <laughs> You're going to continue to sin all, all throughout your life. There's nobody on earth today who is not a sinner, who doesn't sin, saved or unsaved. It's because we're in this body, this body of death. Because we are in this flesh, we will continue to have these desires, these thoughts, these imaginations of sin. Nobody's perfect. All of us, every single one of us falls short of the glory of God. Nobody's perfect. We all need a Savior. We have a Savior. We have Jesus Christ, who has done all the works for us. It's not about what we do. It's about what was done for us. And all we have to do is believe on Him. And of course, if we believe on Him, uh, we will be saved. We are saved if we are born of the Spirit of God. Now, once we are born of the Spirit of God, we are a new creature. So, of course, we are living a completely different lifestyle. Completely different if we are, but well, we should be living a completely different life, right? So, we are. We're a new creature. We're born of the Spirit of God. We're still in this flesh until the day of redemption, which is, which is when Jesus comes. All right, so you got to put your trust in what Jesus Christ has done for us, if you're going to put your trust in your own self, you're going to fail. Guarantee it. That's why we need a Savior. It goes back to uh, why we have a, uh, a Savior to begin with. All right. It's not about what you do. It's about what was done for you. All right. And, yeah, by the way, I still sin. So by your own words, you're condemning yourself because if you die right now, you're not saved. And... I mean, this is the clear gospel is to believe in Jesus and not believe in yourself. When it talks about repenting, it's talking about returning from unbelief to belief. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, you should be confident, right? I mean, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he wants you to have peace, a surety, knowing that you are saved right now. And that you don't have to do the works. But your works will be an example of your faith, for sure. But your works don't save you. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So Jesus wants you to be confident that once you're saved, you're always saved. And that he will continue to work in you to help you grow until the day of his return. Um, so I, th I think initially here, you might be failing to understand what Lordship salvation is. Lordship salvation is that you have to live a certain way to be saved. In essence, saying that what Jesus did, didn't matter, didn't mean nothing. All right. And once saved, always saved is just believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and what 
the works that he did. I hope I've repeated myself over and over. I hope that clears it up. 